On this episode of China Uncensored, five ways China props up North Korea. Welcome back to China Uncensored. I'm your host, Chris Chappell. It's been five weeks since the historic meeting between North Korean dear leader Kim Jong-un and His Excellency Donald Trump. No, seriously, Kim Jong-un has just sent a letter to Donald Trump calling him Your Excellency five separate times. Ugh, what a fanboy. Don't you realize that no one else calls Donald Trump Your Excellency? They call him God Emperor. But anyway, last month's Trump-Kim meeting was bad news for the Chinese Communist Party. China, once the primary conduit between Washington and Pyongyang, is at risk of being largely left on the outside. You see, the Chinese Communist Party liked to be the middleman. If you want to talk the North Korean regime out of nuking the world back to the Stone Age, you have to go through us. But now, the Trump-Kim bromance is attempting to cut out the middleman. And that makes Xi Jinping sad. And then, Trump launched a trade war with China. And that makes Xi Jinping mad. Mad enough that Trump thinks Xi Jinping may be trying to exert negative pressure on Kim Jong-un to not honor his agreement. Trump hopes not, but there have been some hiccups. Like how North Korean officials didn't show up for a scheduled meeting with the U.S. military. And the indications that the North Korean regime is still working on its nuclear program. So, is the Chinese Communist Party exerting negative pressure on Kim Jong-un to not work with Trump? It's hard to say. Xi Jinping met with Kim Jong-un three times this year, including once after Kim's summit with Trump. So it's clear that the Chinese Communist Party is still heavily involved with North Korea and could be influencing how they deal with the U.S. In any case, it's clear that for decades, the Chinese Communist Party has been propping up the North Korean regime for the very purpose of having this kind of control. Here are five ways. Number five, trade. North Korea has always been an international pariah. That's why it's one of the most heavily sanctioned countries on the planet. How did the Kim Dynasty survive? China. China now represents more than 90% of Pyongyang's trade, making it just about North Korea's only economic lifeline. The other 10%? Well, let's just say they found a side hustle. Number four, hacking. Nuclear attacks aren't the only weapon in North Korea's arsenal. Turns out they have some very proficient hackers. According to the Korea Institute of Liberal Democracy in Seoul, today, an elite squad of 6,800 North Korean state hackers are engaged in fraud, blackmail, and online gambling that together generate annual revenue of $860 million. Wow, that's like 7% of their GDP just from hacking. Now, you may not think of North Korea as the place for cutting-edge cyber warfare. But you know what? You gotta start them young. Where did North Korea get these cyber skills? From their friendly neighbor, the Chinese Communist Party. North Korean hackers have attended schools in China and used it as a staging ground for attacks. North Korea eventually established a large outpost for its secretive hacking unit in China. And that's had serious consequences for the world. The magnitude of the attack here is tremendous. We're talking 200,000 computers across 150 different countries. Uh, so this is really the biggest cyber shakedown in history. And ironically, one of the victims of that attack was China. Some relationships are just complicated. Number three, future planning. The Chinese Communist Party had big plans for North Korea. They wanted to mold the North Korean economy to become like China's model of state-run capitalism. And this was the man to do it. That's Kim Jong-nam, eldest son of Kim Jong-il and half-brother of current leader Kim Jong-un. Originally, he was in line to become the leader of North Korea after Kim Jong-il. But then, and this is true, he got caught making a trip to Disneyland in Tokyo using a fake passport. It became kind of an embarrassment for Kim Jong-il. So, Kim Jong-nam quickly fell out of favor with his father and was replaced by Kim Jong-un in the line of succession. Wow, that's harsh. One trip to Disneyland and your father disowns you. But the Chinese regime took Kim Jong-nam in, showering him with the love and the Disneyland visits his own father wouldn't give him. 
Why? Because Kim Jong-nam had supported Chinese-style economic reforms in North Korea and was seen by some as a possible replacement for Kim Jong-un. It was a good plan. Until Kim Jong-un had him assassinated. Allegedly. Number 2. High-Level Intel In China, the secret sauce of power is guanxi, or relationships. Okay, to be fair, relationships are the secret sauce of power everywhere. It's just that it sounds cooler in Chinese. The point is, you have to know the right people. And North Korean leaders knew all the right people. Like Zhou Yang Kong, former head of China's security apparatus. Here he is with Kim Jong-il and his best happy face. And again in 2010 at a military parade. The relationship had some perks. For instance, Kim Jong-un's uncle visited China in 2012 to meet with then-Chinese leader Hu Jintao. And Kim's uncle allegedly proposed the deal of the century. He secretly offered to stop North Korea's nuclear program in exchange for the Chinese regime's help with economic development and putting Kim Jong-nam on the throne. But that would have been bad news for Kim Jong-un. Fortunately, Kim Jong-un's good buddy in China, Zhou Yang Kong, told him about Uncle Zhang's conversation. So Kim disciplined his uncle. And by disciplined, I mean executed. By the way, there are competing factions within the Chinese Communist Party, too. There's one faction that wanted to put Kim Jong-nam in power, and another one, starring Zhou Yang Kong, that warned Kim Jong-un about his naughty uncle. But both factions have something in common. They've been trying to prop up the North Korean regime because they don't want it to collapse. That's so important that they help the regime with... Number 1. Nuclear Weapons We can't talk about the Chinese regime propping up the North Korean regime without mentioning former Chinese leader and human-sized toad Jiang Zemin. Jiang Zemin and Kim Jong-il were close. How close? Too close. And Jiang Zemin is actually one of the reasons we're in this mess with North Korea in the first place. Jiang Zemin helped them develop nukes. Previous Chinese leaders had refused to, because even Deng Xiaoping, who loved killing students, or Mao Zedong, who loved killing anybody, weren't crazy enough to give weapons of mass destruction to the leaders of North Korea. But Jiang Zemin, well, he was just the right kind of crazy. According to this Radio Free Asia report, Jiang Zemin started giving North Korea nuclear material in 1989, allegedly because he was mad at the world for criticizing the Chinese Communist Party for killing students in the Tiananmen Square massacre. Yeah, that'll show the world. And Jiang Zemin took North Korea under his arm and said, Someday, and that day may never come, I'll call upon you to do a service for me. And that day eventually came. It was decades later when Jiang Zemin and his allies were under political attack. According to one China analyst, Jiang's people may have even influenced the timing of North Korea's five nuclear tests as a distraction whenever their faction came under attack. Now, if Jiang did give North Korea help with their nuclear program, he wasn't alone. North Korea also got help from the Soviet Union, Egypt, and Pakistan. But I bet none of them got a thank you like this. So those are five ways the Chinese Communist Party has propped up the North Korean regime. It's been a pretty close friendship for 30 years. So you can see why they might be a tad jealous when some American cowboy comes in to sweep Kim Jong-un off his feet. But before you go, now's the time on the show when we answer questions from fans who support China Uncensored on Patreon. HW asks, why do you say Chinese Communist Party out in full every time? Wouldn't it be easier to just say Chinese government? Seems more time-saving and doesn't confuse new viewers who don't know what the CCP is. Ah. Very good question. The answer is, the Chinese government and the Chinese Communist Party are not the same thing. The Chinese government is the bureaucratic structure that handles the administrative affairs of the country. But what's unusual about China is that the Chinese Communist Party is actually completely in charge. It sits on top of the government and controls it, like a parasite. The Communist Party controls not only the government, but also the media, businesses, religions, trade unions, and really everything else in society. So the government and the party 
are really not the same thing. When the Chinese government does something, it's almost always because the Communist Party is pulling the strings. That's why, to be accurate, I say Chinese Communist Party. Thanks for your question, HW. Actually, maybe this deserves a full episode. And for all the rest of you, leave your comments below if you'd like to see an episode about the differences between the Chinese government and the Chinese Communist Party. Thanks for watching this episode of China Uncensored. Once again, I'm your host, Chris Chappell. See you next time. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more episodes, please support China Uncensored on the crowdfunding website Patreon. You can contribute a dollar or more per episode so we can stay independent and keep bringing you great content. Click this orange button or the link below.